So this project is Mosquito, which is AI-assisted face mask detection. In the era of COVID-19, face masks are instrumental in keeping the public safer by controlling the spread of the virus. So the question is, can modern computer vision models detect incorrect face mask behavior? And from that, could harder be implemented to keep the public safer? Mosquito is currently implemented as a mobile app. I wrote the entire tech stack from scratch. Uh, the mobile app is sleek, easy to use, built for the average consumer. Very simple, and I'll go over that in a minute. The web API is built for future development. Once again, easy to use, um, ridiculously easy to implement. The model is a prediction model. It has three possible outcomes or classes, mask, improperly worn mask, or no mask at all. It's built in a supervised learning environment based on a ResNet model. And I chose ResNet because it's really performant on smaller images. Um, finally, uh, the data set availability was limited for this project because I don't have any access to private data sets. So that means that I had to make do with you know, free, but also lower quality public ones. I made this app free, uh, available for anyone to use everywhere. So an Android app, it's available on GitHub, and developers can use the web API, which I host at my house. Uh, there's only one existing project that's similar to this. It's built by NVIDIA, a hardware conglomerate. Uh, the difference is that it runs on real-time video streams, but as a part of that, it runs on egregiously expensive hardware. And so Mosquito's angle to this project is, can it be accessible to the average consumer? And so the answer to this question is yes. I was actually able to get this project running on a Raspberry Pi, which is a $30 credit card sized computer, which is an order of magnitude cheaper than NVIDIA's $300 example. Being so accessible and cheap and easy to use gives way to the idea of embedded systems, a harder implementation. And so let's think about what that would look like. A harder implementation would be a live video stream similar to security cameras or like a CCTV system uh, that would detect faces and then from there predict whether the faces are or are not wearing a mask. Uh, the ethics behind this are complicated because while masks keep people safer, the general public is already divided on enforcing face masks. So it could be simultaneously used to enforce safety, but it could also be used to harass customers who don't want to wear masks despite the safety concerns. Uh, the big five, Perception, Mosquito perceives the world through cameras, the server holds production model, training the model required a high volume of images. The app has a sleek design that's based uh, off a design for the average consumer. And then harder implementation of this project could be controversial. And so in conclusion, Mosquito detects face masks by applying a real, uh, real world machine learning model to images. It successfully runs on low cost hardware and it could be used in the real world with future funding in a hardware development environment where no similar solutions currently exist. All right, so demo time. Load of VS code here. So I'll do a quick walkthrough of the code. Uh, this is a command line interface example. Uh, I built this because I couldn't figure out how to screen share my phone up onto the computer. Um, so this just uses a couple of test images and then displays the results. Um, so walk through the code. We have all our imports here. I'm using image AI, which is a library based off of Keras. Uh, here we load the model, set up the predictor class as ResNet, as mentioned earlier, and with three possible outcomes that are predefined in the model. And then in a continuous loop, we load a test file, time how long it takes to process here, and then display the results uh, in the command line. So I'll show you the test images really quick. Uh, the file explorer. It's important to note that I did not cherry pick these test images. I have not curated them. I just took them randomly with my phone. So here is me wearing a mask, me wearing a mask improperly, and then no mask at all. Let's close that. Uh, running the model requires about a 10 second one time cost. Uh, loading the model is what requires the CPU usage, but then running the model takes less than a second to process. 
and can be as low as about 100 milliseconds. So let's just load in the first uh, image where I am wearing a mask. All right, so 900 milliseconds, 95% confident that I'm wearing a mask. Let's load in test image number two where I'm wearing it improperly. 96% confident that I am wearing the mask improperly. Hope number three works. 99.6% confident that I'm not wearing a mask. So as you can see, it works and it works really well. As the last part of this demo, I'm gonna show what the app looks like. I released it publicly on the App Store, the Android App Store. Um, with future funding, I could release it on the Apple Store um, because the Apple Store requires license that's pretty expensive. Um, please note that the app is already developed for Apple devices and I've tested it on my, you know, the, the phone that I have. Uh, so here's what the app looks like. It has a simple animated graph. The user can take an image using the camera icon and then in less than a second, the results are displayed on the screen. So very easy to use, built for anyone to use. All right, that's it for the uh, demo. Gabrielle, thanks so much for joining us. You just left the room where you were talking to the judges. How was it? I think it went pretty well. I was excited to finally show the results of my you know, hard two month labor. Now let's talk about your two month labor. So what did you do and what, uh, tell, tell us, first of all, tell us a little bit about your project. Yeah, so Mosquito is real time face mask detection. It takes an image and then can find the face and show whether or not it's wearing a mask properly. That is so interesting. First of all, I'm really intrigued by the name of it. I'm also really intrigued by, 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 by why you picked this project. Tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, I kept seeing videos online of real uh, retail workers having trouble getting stubborn customers to wear masks in physical storefronts. And so I was thinking, you know, if harangued by a computer, would those same customers be more compelled to wear a mask? That's very interesting. And you said you've been working on it for about two months. Tell me about the journey. Yeah, so it started off as just a simple, you know, long shot, you know, maybe this would be something fun to try. Um, after talking a little bit and then doing some research, I started realizing that this project would be interesting and difficult to pursue because I would have to go for a mobile app, a server implementation, and then also creating a model. So I spent the past two months building each of those layers to you know, mesh, work with each other. That's fantastic. And what grade are you in? I'm in 11th grade. 11th grade, so you're getting ready to go to college. Tell me about it. So have you applied? What are you looking for? What, 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 what college path are you taking? Well, I just had my first uh, college um, counseling session at my school on Thursday, actually. I have no clue where I'm going, don't know what I'm doing, but I'm excited to find out. Well, hey, you know what? The young, sharp, focused man that you are and coming up with this project and such a relevant project in such interesting times, I'm sure you're gonna have no problem doing it. How did you hear about Wacy? My computer science teacher got forwarded an email that he then sent to me. I figured, hey, it applies to my project. So I decided to apply. Well, I'm so glad that we have you on board and I'm so, so glad that you're participating. You also interact with a lot of uh, students your age. Uh, what's your message to them? Uh, regardless of whether or not they wanna be in computer science, not in computer science, whatever major they wanna, they, they, they would like to pick. Why, do you think it's important for them to learn about basics of AI? And if so, why? Realistically, I don't think that most people need to know about AI. I think the one thing that everybody should know is that it's never an issue with the programming, it's always an issue with the data sets. So if people are ever having issues with AI or social issues come up from a result of the use of AI, we always need to look at where is the data coming from and is it being properly curated? I could not be saying it any better than you did. So uh, issues such as data bias, issues that are associated with in inherent issues with data themselves, I, I, I agree with you, but perhaps rather than thinking about understanding more AI concepts. We should learn more about AI applications and implications of AI, how it's gonna change a lot of things that we're doing. Kind of, in a way, I think you're kind of uh, telling us to uh, go on a deeper level, think about AI. Uh, and that's, I think that's, that's what we owe it to, to ourselves, regardless of our majors or what we're doing. You know, I think there's so much to explore and every, every possibility 
you know, cross-divisional, interdivisional. I think there's some application of AI there. No, I agree with you 100%. Um, so, um, so it seems that you got introduced to this project through your teacher. How important do you think is a role of teachers now? In, you, you're about to graduate from high school in a, a little bit over a year from now. Um, how important is the role of teachers uh, in order to, to kind of bring, uh, you know, start the conversations? You know, you talk, be it about data sets, as you alluded to, or other conversations with, with students. You know, I think that for the vast majority of people, teachers are instrumental in creating a strong foundation, especially with technology. In my personal journey though, I actually started coding when I was just eight years old and I really didn't have any guidance for almost a decade. So I'm really grateful to have, finally have somebody, you know, who's got my back there. But the truth is a lot of younger students won't have that and finding better teachers will be really important so that the next generation can learn concepts properly. I agree with you 110%. Um, uh, Gabrielle, I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, you are very, yeah, you're very, um, you're a very confident young man, and I, I look forward to actually see your presentation. By the way, for those of us that are watching this video, the link to Gabrielle's presentation will be in the description of this video once it's posted online. And uh, so I, um, I hope other students in your school uh, across the United States, around the world, see that they be inspired by it, but also more important, they be as confident as you are in saying, hey, listen, this is what I wanted to do at the same time. I don't know what I'm gonna major in college, which is, by the way, it's okay to be that way. I interviewed many kids and many students. Some of them are saying, exactly, this is what I wanna be. I said, well, this is wonderful, but are you flexible? You might change your mind. So I like the flexibility, Gabriel, that you have. I hope you participate also next year. I also hope that after next year, Wasey 2022 or 23, 2023, you participate in, in different capacities. Yeah, of course, I would love to. Great to have you on board. Enjoy the rest of the day and thank you for spending a few minutes of your time with us here on Saturday, December 5th and looking forward to seeing you. Thank you very much.